Hi everyone, Vegetable Man here. Today we've got a replay in the Tier 7 American Cruiser, Baltimore. And we've got a pretty well balanced game, an unusually well balanced game for Tier 7 actually. Three destroyers, three cruisers, three battleships on each team. Uh, actually on our team, sorry, we've got four destroyers. But generally speaking, you don't see a lot of cruisers at uh, Tier 7. So that's a nice change, I think. I think this is how it should be more often. And what Wargaming really needs to make this happen is to probably somehow make cruisers more viable. I'm not really sure how they do that, but what you generally get is a lot of destroyers and a lot of battleships. The reason you get a lot of destroyers is because their natural counter is the cruiser and if you don't have a lot of cruisers then you will have a lot more destroyers. I'm pushing right straight here for this island. This is where I'm going to set up camp and this is what I really want to show in this replay is what the Baltimore is good at. The Baltimore is not good at dealing a lot of damage. What the Baltimore is good at is winning games by being a support ship. You do have fantastic guns, your DPM is pretty good, but really what you need to do is you need to get in a position to use your radar, if you need it, your hydro. Your radar is the most critical tool you bring, there's no other ship line in the game that has radar at the moment, and with a heavy destroyer meta, radar is crucially important. So I'm trying to push up here to a spot where I can shoot but not get shot at. And right now we're playing spotted, which isn't great. And you can see I've got four people who want to shoot me, which is not ideal. Um, the Baltimore is not particularly uh, well armored. I'm not going to bounce any of these shells. So I tend to get a lot of damage. I'm going to need my heals. That is for sure. Drop that down to two shooting me now. And that's probably due to the position that I'm in. You can see here there's torpedoes coming from my left already. And that's really unusual. Straight away, okay, I know this is a destroyer here, and he's close. Uh, so, I pop my radar. Pop my hydro, because I'm pretty sure he's going to shoot more. And then, look, there's another destroyer here. So, there's two of them are pushed right up here. Which is a really unusual decision, since they both knew that I was here. And you'll see, my HE is very strong. Very, very strong against these destroyers. That Kigero is not going to get away. Doesn't matter if he smokes or anything, my radar's going, my hydro's going, and we take him out. We've already got 45,000 damage, as you can see, and it was mostly due to shooting some of the battleships and setting them on fire early on. We've taken out one of the destroyers, they've also lost two other ships, so straight away they've had a rough start. But you can see, I know that other destroyer's here, and he's going to be a real pain because he's going to keep me spotted in my spot where I wanted to sit and rain down some fire on these battleships. I do see some people saying, oh, cruisers, you know, it's too easy. All they have to do is sit behind the sit behind the islands and fire at you. Well, I think maybe try it yourself before you say it's that easy. Um, as you can see here, when you're spotted, you still become quite vulnerable. And like I said, you're not going to bounce anything with your armor. You're going to eat a lot of damage. I've lost another destroyer now, so they've lost two of their three. And I'm still fairly sure that that guy's off to my left here, because I'm still spotted. And I feel like right now, the way the islands are laid out, okay, the Bismarck's spotting me, but if I push up, I should get unspotted, and I'm pretty confident I'm not going to get unspotted. Which means the destroyer is somewhere in my arc here. My Hydra's just run out, my radar's got a long cooldown cool down time. Hit me, and as you can see, I've used one of my heels, so I'm just going to push up a bit. Actually, there we go. That confirms my thoughts, and thankfully, that Jean Bart is going to eat a lot of those torpedoes. Well, all of them, and save me from them. They were probably actually aimed at him anyway, but that could have been a really unfortunate circumstance. And his health is now pretty low. I'm waiting for this cruiser to come around the corner here. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. He kills our Jean Bart. That's the first ship on our team to go down, so we're still in a very strong position. I'm backing up now. I don't want to stay on the same course and speed for any length of time to let this destroyer get a shot at me. 
Still got 30 seconds till my radar is up, so I've got quite the wait ahead of me as well. Again, still spotted. I know he's somewhere within my detection range, which is not too far off my radar range. So I'm reasonably sure if I'm spotted and I'm 100% sure it's the destroyer spotting me right now, if I radar, I'm probably going to see him unless he's very good at what he's doing and he knows. Now I've become unspotted there, so it tells me one of two things. Either he has gone behind an island, which is a good piece of information about where he might be for me, or he's gone out of my detection range. I'm going to gamble on that it's the first of those two options, that he's gone behind an island. So I'm just thinking here, okay, which island is he likely to have gone behind? Okay, there we go, I'm spotted again, I know. Okay, there he is. Right there, my radar's just sped up, he's in trouble. Even if he smokes, he's not going to go undetected. And maybe he knows that four and a half thousand uh, hit points of damage on that first salvo there. That's where the Baltimore HE is excellent. Baltimore also has exceptionally good, um, exceptionally Torpedoes good direct front. Uh, armor piercing, but obviously I'm not using it in that case. You've got great uh, penetra uh, penetration angles and you'll get a lot of citadels on broadside cruisers. I have one torpedo there. It's not the end of the world. I use my repair and I'll use my heal in a second, I'm sure. There we go. This Charles Martel is clearly trying to torpedo rush me. I load the armor piercing because I want to make sure he dies. Because if he gets a salvo of torps away, I'm dead. He manages to set me on fire and he eats two of those torpedoes and dies, thankfully, before he can torpedo me. I'm now pushing forward again because I'm getting shot at from the battleship to my right. So I'm pushing forward and shooting this Otago. As you can see here, now it's all coming to a bit of a head and things are happening quite quickly. Haven't done a lot of damage in the intervening time, but the damage I have done has been to destroyers, which is quite good. And a decent salvo there on the Otago. Would have liked some citadels since he was full broadside, but can't win them all. I see that Asashi was trying to sneak around behind me. And I've got a, the destroyer to my left, and I've got a friend there in the other Baltimore up to the left as well. So I'm pretty sure he's not going to make it around that island without killing me. Get a citadel there on the Otago. Get set on fire. I use my repair straight away so I don't die. But taking the risk that he might set me on fire again. It's worth the risk to not die now, and three citadels, as I mentioned, and goodbye, Otago. Sashio is coming around the corner, just being ready to shoot him if I need to. Still got the AP loaded. Pop off one so one shot, and don't kill him, unfortunately. His torpedo is coming from the Otago. I was fairly sure I knew they'd be coming, that's why I was running my Hydro, and comfortably avoided them, but I predicted them anyway. Don't really need Hydro to know that that's happening. Yeah, uh, Sashio is dead now, and we've got a Bismarck to shoot at, and that's it, that's the last ship left. We've lost only one ship, and they have lost almost all of theirs, so it's been quite a dominant game. Shooting the Bismarck with HE, set him on fire, and pretty low health here. He's probably going to kill me if he shoots his main guns at me, but again, I'm pretty sure we've got this one comfortably in the bag, so I'm okay with that. Hit him one more time, he's still alive, he's taking a lot of punishment, he shoots at me, I shoot one final servo off, I die, and the Bismarck goes down about 0 0.001 of a second later. <laughs> it was an enjoyable game, uh, ranking up through the Belfast campaign there, and have a look now at the end game screen. 85,000 damage, two kills, 2,500 base XP, topping the team. Very enjoyable game. That's what the Baltimore is really strong at. Making those, uh, making the plays count, getting the destroyers down, and I've, as I mentioned before, that's how you win games. Quick look now at the ship and commander setup. Uh, Baltimore is fully upgraded. So in the first slot we have aiming systems mod 1 for the better dispersion of the main battery. That's pretty much the only reason why. Secondary battery mod 2 is obviously a no-no. And main battery mod, I don't want to decrease my reload time. Second slot, I've taken steering gears. I think you could take either propulsion or steering gears as a good choice, but I've gone with steering gears here to try and dodge those shells a bit better. 
concealment in the third slot you could go for the ultra um, long range firing build and put steering gears in your other slot um, I think that could be a viable choice and combine that with the gunfire system mod 2 which gives you more range but I've actually gone for a uh, team player team player build and looking at the captain now we've got Norman Scott whose base trait is better precision of the main guns and that's fantastic with your AP increased concealment from Mikawa there for number one inspiration and secondary inspiration I've got Charles Madden for the increase in traverse and reload time range of the main guns in the first slot there 10% range is great to have chance of fire increased you always want to be trying to set those fires if you can incoming fire dispersion with also the warning indicator and that again is why I picked that particular one for the warning indicator it's such useful information fourth slot more precision and better dispersion of the main battery again that's all about getting those good AP salvos not worth taking steer clear and fully packed gives us one extra consumable with the radar and the hydro and the heal that is really valuable well thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you next time